Now we're going to start assembling the back here. Uh, that's the unit that will eventually go in this. Um, just to review real quick, if you remember when we took this apart, this is the back gear itself. It has a shaft pressed into it, like that. Now this normally sits in the middle like this, that's the, the, the high speed or direct drive clutch dogs right there. Then this has this collar, which is riding on bearings around it. Um, the way the bearings go is the bearing goes in here. Notice there are two snap rings. So we have a bearing in this side and a bearing in this side with a collar in between. And it all stacks up on this bearing, which is the bottom bearing of this guy. And these are all pressed onto this shaft. Um, there's a collar and then the top bearing, and those all sit in here along with the, with the snap rings. And then there is a nut on top of this that clamps it all down. Now, of course, the nut threads are really down here. Um, anyhow, just to give you some idea of how it all goes back together. Now, these are all pressed together. The way we're going to get all this stuff back together is the first thing I'm going to do is press the back gear back onto this shaft. If you remember, I took the whole thing apart in one, one fell swoop. And you notice I've marked the back gear so I know the relationship. This is the bottom. Since it normally sets like that, this is going in through here. It's got a big old key that drives it. Make sure it doesn't slip. So we're going to press that on first. Then I'm going to put one of the bearings in this end, and that's actually a light press fit, so I can just tap that in. And I'm going to press this entire assembly over the top, add the spacer, and then press in the last bearing into there and put the lock nut on. That's how we're going to do this. Um, so again, these are uh, sealed bearings. Now this part does get a little bit of oil, but not a bunch. Uh, nobody oils these things anyhow. So these are sealed, sealed for life, whatever life is. They uh, are 6908 bearings. And so that's what we're going to do. So let's go over to the press and we'll, uh, we'll start putting this guy back together. Okay, we're back at the press. Uh, we're going to first press this shaft back in to the back gear. Uh, point out something real quick. This shaft has a key that goes into the back gear. That key is not the length of this slot. It has a flat side, or the proper one has a flat side, and it has to be that way towards the, the clutch dogs. Otherwise, it'll stick out from the top or the bottom and won't allow the bearing to seat down there. So make sure when you put that key in, now it's going to naturally get pushed that direction when we, when we press it in. Um, Alright, we're going to line everything up. And then hopefully, we're just going to shove that down in there. key is below this lip that the bearing seats on. I want to make sure that's true and that that shaft is all the way in there. Okay, now we're going to proceed to build the thing. I've got the, the um, barrel that this thing runs in. Uh, I've already put the bearing on this side. This is the side that goes that way. Uh, I just used a hammer to put that in. It's, a, it's not a real tight press fit, though I know hammering on the bearing. 
Anyhow, you got to do what you got to do. We're going to go ahead and press this on. And for that, I'm going to use a piece of tubing that fits fairly well around the bearing, around the shaft. And we're going to hopefully just press that in. down far enough, it of course spins, and you should have just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, between the top of that lip and the back here itself. Okay, next thing that goes in is this collar, spacer, then we're going to put the other bearing in on top of it, and we're going to, we're going to press this with the inside, although it's it's actually pressing it into both of them. But it's not too hard to fit. The end make sure it spins okay. <laughs> and the final piece is this lock nut. I do want to point out with this lock nut that it also has, it goes on a certain way, it's got a, a lip around here and it's also tapered and that goes with that lip down towards the bearings so it applies all the pressure to the inner race of the bearing. Uh, the other thing with this nut is it's really easy to cross thread it so be very careful when you get it started uh, Sometimes it's a process getting this guy back on. It'll be easy to turn some places and harder to turn other places. Uh, just take your time, work it down there, and get it down there, and it has to be a really tight fit, or tightened, I should say, <laughs> once you get it there. And again, I'm going to use a punch and a hammer to do that. Um, it's about the only way we've got to do it around here. So uh, nothing wrong with that. Anyhow. While I'm over here at the press, I'm going to go ahead and replace the bearings on this pinion. Uh, this is what drives the back gear. Um, I want to replace, there's a bearing on the top and a bearing on the bottom. This is what the uh, timing belt pulley sets on and drives the back gear. Uh, the easiest way to get this thing apart is this gear is held to the shaft with a lock set screw. Just uh, loosen the set screw, or I like to take them out, uh, just to make sure it's, it is loose and clear of the flat. Uh, then I'm going to stick it in here in my plate with the hole in it to clear the bottom bearing. And all I'm going to do is press this entire thing. Press the shaft through the entire thing. Then we're going to take off the gear and we're going to find a longer rod. That falls on the floor and we've got the gear off, we've got the top bearing off, and of course. The bottom bearing is simply a matter of pushing it off. It almost fits in my or just banging it and it comes off. So it's supposed to be pressed on. Note again, there's a key in here that goes through goes through this gear and remember how that gear went on. It goes on, the relationship is here, the gear is down from where the timing belt pulley goes. So uh, we're just going to press a couple of bearings, reassemble this, 
and uh, continue on. Okay, I've uh, taken my time, carefully worked this locking nut down here, uh, made sure, absolutely sure that it was on the bearings, that the bearings were seated properly, and then tightened it down the best I could using a couple of punches, a hammer, a screwdriver to turn it, whatever it takes. Take your time and get it down there right. I want to point out, this is a real bridge port. Uh, this is one place where uh, a lot of clone knee mills have differences. Uh, the biggest difference I've seen is a lot of them have a, a keyway in this shaft and a tab locking washer to lock this nut down in there. Um, the bridge port doesn't have that. Uh, I don't recall what it was coming loose, but make sure you see it down in there pretty tight. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. We're ready to reassemble this part. Uh, put the back gear back in and all this. Um, I want to point out, I haven't, like, scrubbed this. Uh, we're repairing it, uh, sort of rebuilding the mechanical part of it. Uh, there was no reason to. It's not that dirty. But the big thing is the grease, and it should have lots of grease in here. And there's nothing wrong with the grease that's in it. So rather than spending two hours getting rid of all of that. I'm just going to leave it like it is. Um, first thing we want to do is put the pinion assembly in here that fits into the hole in the casting. It's got a wave washer that applies pressure to keep the shaft down. And then this cover plate. Um, have to sort of wiggle everything around and get it all lined up. And we'll hold it down. Hopefully. Right in my bolts. We've got that in there. We want to put our three springs back in. Slide this hardened washer over this assembly. Okay, we're going to slide this entire back gear assembly in here. Now, if you remember, in taking it apart, this is the rack that the speed lever the gear change lever engages, and that goes in over here. So when we put it in, we're going to start putting it in by sort of lining it up where the lever is going to go. But, to make it more fun, down here on the bottom, there are two tabs that serve to locate this thing. And sometimes getting it lined up with those tabs. Get that in there. 
and we're going to put the speed change, which is actually the only thing, the gear shift is the only thing that holds this in, and get it oriented right. And we're going to put that in, and we're just going to guess where the gear mesh is for now, because what we want to do once we get it in there is we are going to put it in back gear, low gear, and when we do, and I lucked out, we want the back gear to be perfectly flush with the pinion when it's in back gear or low gear. That's with the handle towards the back. Once it's locked in, once you got that lined up, you can go ahead and uh, bolt this guy in. Now sometimes it takes a little finagling to get all this stuff right. This one happened to go together pretty good, which doesn't bode well for the future. Okay, that's that's the back. Now we're going to go ahead and put the cover on this. Felt full of grease. Well, a bunch of grease, not full. Put the cover on this and the pulley on it, and we'll be done with this part.